This is the Free Here Life Podcast, episode number 11. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Here Life shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. And it's good to be here this week. Just got back from the 30th annual Midwest Telefest in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in the middle of the United States. And it was awesome. I had such a good time and uh, reminded me a lot about our community and, and just getting together and how important it is to gather and uh, share ideas and enjoy the things that we love. And uh, we were up in the Porcupine uh, Mountains, which is a state park on the edge of uh, Lake Superior. And we had a little bit of fresh snow and plenty of good times to go along with it. So um want to thank everybody for having me up there and um, really enjoyed my time. Keith Opperman, Matt Manders, and uh, everybody else who we met up there. Uh, they're doing a great job of holding it down and keeping a, a long-running tradition alive. Um, it's probably one of the longest-running uh, telemark festivals in the country. So um, we're going to have – I'm probably going to – we tried to pull off a podcast while I was there, but I think what we're going to have to do is probably uh, do a little debrief this week and uh, hopefully have something up to talk a little bit more about all the events that went down. And I'm working on a little write up and a video for that as well. So got lots of fun photos and videos of uh, what we were up to while we were there. Uh, other things on the newsroom uh, in in the way of festivals coming up, we got the Corey Anderson Festival in Bromley, Vermont, February 22nd on the East Coast. I know there's some other ones coming up. I'm going to try and uh, get a list of that so I can actually give you guys some more newsroom tidbits about stuff coming up. I know there's, there's quite a number of them, and I haven't done a great job of uh, putting a calendar together this year, so hopefully... I'll have some more by the time I do the next podcast and you guys will know what's going on out there. But uh, new articles on telemarksgear.com. We did a little reboot of the Scott Synergy boot review uh, uh, as well as we are working on some videos for the 22 Designs links. It got to us so late this season, it kind of took us a minute to sort of put together all the stuff that we wanted to but we are working on some of that so stay tuned if you haven't subscribed to the youtube channel that's kind of where uh telemarks gear magazine and sort of our free hill life telemark shop kind of merge um that way we can kind of have everything from gear review videos all the way to how to use certain parts of gear and uh, even like the technical aspect of fixing some of these bindings and 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 whatnot so We'd love for you to subscribe. That's been a really cool thing. Uh, the podcast is obviously over there as well, uh, just in audio format. Uh, but there's plenty of videos to check out and stoke and all that good stuff. So today's episode basically is uh, I'm going to talk about five things for the beginner telemark skier. And I'm going to try to do this a little bit more in the future as well. I know that something about growing our sport that's so important is, you know, we need to speak a language that people understand and we need to do that in a, as, as regularly as we can. So we aren't just delving so deep all the time that people, uh, can't access, uh, simple information. So, um, you know, you may be thinking, Oh, I'm, you know, I've been a tele skier for 20 or 30 years. I'm not that into listening to uh, a beginner podcast, but keep in mind this might be a good opportunity for you to listen to uh, this and maybe think back to when you were learning how to telemark yourself and hopefully some of these things will resonate with you and might be helpful if you're someone who's passing the turn along to somebody else. I always like to think about ourselves as protectors of the turn and the reason I always say that is I feel like it's... Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's important as, as we learn the turn, we're super stoked about it. It's important for us to protect that knowledge and pass it along to the next generation. And that's a big part, I think, of, of what has made Telemark um, such a, a community-based thing and a passionate thing is the fact that we 
kind of hold it close to our hearts once we learn how to do it and hopefully we pass it on to a friend. So five questions that I kind of came up with that I feel like come up a lot as someone is getting into telemark skiing and guide us through some of the answers, at least from my perspective. And like I said, hopefully they'll resonate with you. And if you're a beginner tele skier, or maybe you haven't even tried it yet, um, these might be some of the things that may be even holding you back from trying. And uh, I wanted to, to tackle those and allay your fears, so to speak, and uh, let you know what you're getting into. First off, is the telemark turn hard? This is number one question I hear all the time. And it's a fair question. Um, I think when um, you see a telemark skier uh, at your local hill, or maybe you're on a trip and you see him at, at a hill where there's more of them than you're used to, uh, I feel like people look at it and, and visually it, it looks pretty hard. I mean, you're, you're doing two lunges down the alternating lunges down the mountain and it, it can be a little, uh, intense for some people to see, um, to answer the question in short. Yes, it's hard. And the reason I say that, you know, some of you out there might be saying, and I've, man, I've been in meetings over the last 20 years, countless times where people are like, we need to make this look easy. <laughs> We're going to get more people into this if we just make it look easy. Um, here's the thing. Telemark is hard, and that's what makes it so awesome, is there is a steep pay-in uh, to learn how to telemark in comparison to a lot of other things, and especially in the snow sports world. And to clarify, it's, it's a steep pay-in to get really good at it. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's also part of the charm. And I always say that, and I think I've said this in a previous podcast too, and I say it, I say it all the time is telemark in my opinion is, is a personality choice, not a logical choice. Uh, most people don't look at things that are hard. Uh, certain, certain types of people don't look at things that are hard and are attracted to them because they're hard. And there's other people that look at those things and say, Hey, there's something here. I'm, I'm interested in figuring out how to learn a technique. I'm, I'm interested in learning how to make something difficult be easier. And it's usually through a refining process. And there's so many things like that in life, right? That, you know, we get into and you have to put some time into it. Um, and it's just, it's something that's almost addicting, you know, it's, it's, uh, something you're constantly never, you're constantly fine tuning and, and it's never perfected. Um, and I think that's, that's an important thing. So, um, one, one part about this being hard too, is I often liken telemark skiing to a craft and not necessarily a sport. And, you know, it, yeah, it can be sport, you know, we can race or, you know, do certain things where we're competing with each other. And it's probably more of a sporting type event. But I think the telemark turn in and of itself is sort of a craft. Um, it's, uh, it's something you're going to learn. Um, you're going to learn technique. And honestly, your technique probably will be a lot based on who you learn it from uh, and where you learn. Um you know, skiing in the Midwest this weekend, I was r reminded, I, I, I always joke, I say, that when, once you get close to the Mississippi River and East, uh, you know that someone's from that zone because they say skiing woods, for instance. Um, it's not tree skiing, and it's legitimately skiing woods. It's tight. Uh, there's all sorts of little whipper saplings that are hitting you in the face, and um, it really defines your turn. And I thought about how cool that was when I was out there this weekend is, you know, people are always like, Oh, you're from Utah. Why would you go to a small mountain in the Midwest? Why, why, why do you want to go there and ski? And for me, it's exactly for those reasons because it helps me hone my skills. And, you know, I started, you know, telemarking decades ago and I absolutely love going to a place like that because it makes me have to be better. I have to learn how to perfect my technique 
in a different way where I normally wouldn't do that here at home because simply the, the, the way that the, the, the mountain is formed is different. I'm not dealing with a bunch of fallen logs and hardwoods, you know, it's more of a, um, you know, big pine trees and that sort of thing, much more open and spaced out. And I really admire, uh, the idea that, that this craft that, that we have is something that is constantly, um, an edge that we need to hone and make better. And I absolutely love that. So if you're hearing this for the first time and, and you, you know, you're interested in getting into telemark, think about your personality. And honestly, you've probably shut it off by this point. If, if you hear all that stuff and you're not like, yeah, that sounds cool. I'm into it. <laughs> you're probably not going to be a telemark skier. And frankly, it's not for everybody. Um, it's, it's for the right type of personality and you're going to have to put some work in, but you're going to be psyched. Um, and you're going to be able to share that stoke with thousands of other people that you meet around, you know, the world, your city, wherever, wherever you're telemarking. I think that is what bonds us together is it is a, a pay in that is incredibly rewarding as you learn and it continues to be rewarding as you go forward. So, um, so that's kind of my take on telemark scheme being hard. Yeah, it's hard and you're going to love it and you're going to keep loving it because (laughs) it's a never ending process. Um, you know, I didn't put this in there, but a kind of a side note, are you too old or too young? Uh, is there like a good age? Um, absolutely not. Um, you can be, we have kids rental boots in our shop that go down to a Mondo, uh, 19, which is like a kid's size 12. Um, and I've seen tons of young people be awesome at telemark skiing. Uh, you know, when they're, you know, eight, 10 years old. And I've also seen people get into telemark in their sixties and continue on into their seventies and even eighties. So there's not really, I think there's a misconception that, you know, it's an, there's an age thing attached to this and there's just not. Um, so I think that goes along with, with it being hard. So hopefully that makes sense to you and, uh, kind of shed some light on maybe my perspective on, uh, whether telemark skiing is hard. So, um, moving on to the next question. And we see this obviously having a shop where we talk to a lot of people that are interested in getting into telemark skiing is the question of, does it matter what gear I start on? And we have, uh, used gear here. We have new gear here. And frankly, it does not matter what gear you start on. Um, Obviously, certain types of gear are going to be advantageous in uh, ease of use and um, helping you make stronger turns right off the bat. And other equipment, uh, you know, might be, might require a little more technique to use it. The gear is is it's going to affect some things, but I think the important thing is, is, um, do you need a specific type of gear or era of gear in order to get into this? And I, I'm just not a big believer that you gotta, you have to have the latest and greatest, uh, to enjoy yourself. And, um, it's in in most cases, it's just getting out there. You're not going to have a whole lot of reference point for all the nitty gritty aspects of the gear. Um, the first thing you want to do though, is look in your area and see, are, are there any rentals available? Because there is a difficulty in finding rental gear, uh, in, in your areas. And we know that (laughs) that's why we opened a telemark shop here and, and in Salt Lake is even, even in a place like this, there wasn't that many rentals. There was some, and, um, I know across the country, you know, again, you know, I was just in the Midwest, you know, driving through there and it's incredibly difficult to find stuff. Um, 
in towns that you might think would have them, there's not. Um, ski resorts that once carried them don't have them any longer. But it's worth you know a quick Google search and uh, see what's available. You know, and there might actually be rentals in your area that you can uh, take out. That's obviously going to be a good um, entryway into newer gear, and you're not going to get stuck with something a little bit older that kind of has a different feel to it. Um, but like I said, whatever you can get your hands on, do it. And I think that was the best part, you know, uh, getting into telemark a long time ago is, you know, and you'll, you'll hear people kind of gripe about the price of gear these days and whatnot. And that's an entirely (laughs) separate subject, but you know, it was pretty easy to find gear and, um, you know, kind of slap it together and go. Um, so along with the rental thing, you know, if you are getting into telemark and you start, you know, even listening to listening to this podcast or checking out videos or uh, getting on uh, our, our telemark skier magazine forum, you may you may see people actually start talking about 75 millimeter versus NTN. And I think this can kind of be a daunting task because if you're just getting into this, you know, and all of a sudden you're like, well, which boots am I supposed to get and which bindings? And I mean, I've seen it even where someone buys, you know, a 75 millimeter boot and a NTN binding and they have no idea, you know, and there's some confusion there. Um, again, doesn't matter as long as your heels not attached, uh, you know, obviously a leather boots going to be harder on a three pin binding, but if that's all you got, make it work. Uh, if you got a 75 millimeter boot and it's low cuff and three buckle or two buckle, you can make it work. Um, and if it's a 75 millimeter brand new demo rental, you can make that work too. Um, the technique may feel a little bit different depending on the gear. And, um, you know, that's with newer gear, you know, you've got step in and all sorts of stuff now that that's available. But the bottom line is if you can, drop your knee and make a telemark turn, you're good to go. Don't overthink it. Just find what's available and uh, do something that, uh, whether it's a rental or getting some used gear, don't spend too much money, uh, you know, when you're going to buy and just try to get into it and, and uh, just get started. So um, on that note, One thing is if you're an alpine skier and you have an extra pair of skis kicking around, uh, think about putting the money into the boots and your bindings and kind of, you know, don't worry so much about finding the right ski or whatnot as you're starting out, you know, try to make it inexpensive, you know, and, and try to take that barrier of entry away so that, you know, um, you know, you can get something that's going to function and, you know, instead of spending money on a brand new pair of skis to do it, you might be able to find something in the garage that'll work for, you know, your first half season or whatever of trying to get into telly. There's a lot of different ways to combine, combine ideas and, and put something together. But the overall is don't worry too much about getting the most up to date gear as much as just find some gear. And, uh, find someone who can kind of explain it and make sure that you get on something that's going to work. And, uh, that's, what's important. Question number three, should I take a lesson? This kind of goes along with the rental thing. And similarly, um, if you live near a ski resort, I would suggest that that is the number one place that you could try to reach out and just ask them if they have telemark lessons that are available to the public. Unfortunately, a common trend that's been happening in the last decade or so is there are not as many um, mountains offering group lesson pricing for telemark skiers. And what that does is They may offer telemark, but they're going to require that you do a half day private or a multiple hour private lesson. And that dramatically increases the cost. And it's very unfortunate because, um, I know we deal with that here in Salt Lake city is, you know, you're thinking, 
I, this is what I was thinking when I opened a shop and, you know, I've taught in a local ski school here at one point And I remember, uh, going up and talking to the mountains and they're saying, we no longer offer telemark group pre- lesson pricing. And I said, Oh, why is that? And they're like, well, there's no demand. Nobody wants to learn how to telemark ski. I said, huh, that's funny. I just opened a telemark shop here in Salt Lake city. And seems like there's a lot of people asking me about lessons. <laughs> so, um, you know, there, there's obviously some discrepancy there. And I, I thought, you know, we would offer the rentals here. We would, you know, um, convey, you know, the interest level. Uh, but even here in Salt Lake, you know, there's a certain level of, um, you know, disbelief that there's a demand for telemark skiing. So just, just keep that in mind that your hill may not offer a group lesson that's affordable. If you have the dough and you're able to do a, a half day private with someone, by all means go for it, but don't break the bank. You know, I think again, take your barrier of entry away a little bit so that you're not just dropping a bunch of coin on trying to learn how to telemark ski if you do not have the means especially if you're a young person you know the if you're in college and you want to learn how to telemark ski you're probably not going to drop 300 you know dollars on a private lesson and buy all the new gear and um you know i know i don't want to see that happen um so what are your alternatives um the next one would be reading a book um or probably the more modern version of that is look on YouTube. There's a, a ton of, there's not a ton, but there are some YouTube videos, um, some people that offer some, um, you know, basic lessons on how to make the turn. And uh, I think that's that's a great option. Uh, books are good if you're a, a reader. Um, there haven't been a whole lot of updated books. Um, Paul Parker's book was honestly back in the late eighties, early nineties or Mike and Allen's books. Um, and then there's the real old school books. I'm not familiar. I, there may be some more modern stuff. Um, I probably need to do a little rally catch up to see if there is stuff out there, but a book is not a bad way to do it. It's going to give you the, even the old stuff is going to give you a basic understanding of what a telemark turn is and the idea of dropping a knee and making two skis essentially into one ski um, and how to alternate those and how to initiate the turns. Um, So book would be number two videos online. Uh, Those are, you know, more or less free and you might be able to to find that information just with a simple search on the internet and uh the next one i would say is uh finding a friend or a local group of people uh that's a great way go out with a buddy uh and you know someone who someone who you know and oftentimes this is how you're gonna you're getting into telemark skiing anyways is you've got you've got that uh telemark friend that is always telemarking and is so stoked on it and you've watched them for years and eventually you're asking them like hey can i you got a pair of skis i can borrow and can you give me a a quick lesson on how to do it i've been watching you do this looks pretty cool um again share the turn you know, spread telemark. That's where that whole thing came from. You know, let's, sh- let's share this with other people. Let's make it easy for them to do. And, uh, you know, try not to ruin any friendships or relationships over teaching somebody, but, uh, going out and sharing that turn is incredibly important to pass this knowledge from one person to the next. And, you know, being at these little festivals, like we were, you know, uh, there was a, a demo, some gear, um, and, it was awesome, you know, to, to see that people trying it that had never tried it before. And, uh, I was actually, I was actually telling them too, you know, with the, with the lesson and having a little demo. And this kind of goes back to the gear thing, you guys, uh, it's funny as it sounds when we opened free heel life, the shop here in Salt Lake, we couldn't afford rentals. I, I mean, we just didn't have any money to buy extra skis and boots and bindings. And so what we did, I had, I had maybe three or four pairs of old skis that were mine 
and I said, let's, let's make these into our rentals. And so what we did is we spray painted the tops of these skis black and we made some stickers and we put some free hill life stickers on top, some little die cuts and mounted up with some bindings and we rented them for 20 bucks and people took them out all the time and we didn't overthink it. And I, it, it confirmed my belief that there are people that want to just learn how to telemark. And if that's all that's available to learn how to telemark that they're going to, they're going to take it out. And I've seen tons of other examples of people doing stuff like this, you know, with their friends. So share your gear and share telemark and share the turn and teach people how to do it and have some fun joking around and watching each other, uh, fall on your faces and try to figure it out and learn that pan together. It's, it's an amazing experience. So, so that kind of covers the, the gear and the lessons and kind of why we do this whole thing. Um, let's move on to question number four. Do I need to know how to ski first? The answer in short is no, not at all. Um, I'm actually teaching my girlfriend Kate right now how to ski and Telly all at the same time. So she's on Telemark gear and it's, uh, it's been fun to watch. She didn't, you know, she, uh, didn't have a, a background in skiing. Maybe she had done it once a long, long time ago. And, uh, it's, it's cool because what we're doing is having the opportunity to learn Alpine technique and Telemark technique kind of all at once. And, you don't really need any background and you know, of of course it's going to help if you are a little more athletic and, uh, you know, you've maybe had some experience. Maybe you went cross country skiing or even on a pair of ice skates or, you know, you're used to some sort of rollerblading, you know, you've got some sort of independent foot movement that you've had, uh, in terms of something that might translate over. But, when, when it comes down to brass tacks, no, you do not need to know how to ski in order to learn how to telemark. And in fact, you can do it at the same time. And that's kind of why I think kids do so well on tele gear too, is, you know, at, at that, at a young age, you don't actually really know the difference between having your heel locked down and not, you can learn a nice, um, parallel technique and you can learn a telemark turn and you have the ability to, to do both. And, and I think that's, that's awesome. Um, some people are coming from skiing. Other people are coming from snowboarding. We actually see quite a few snowboarders, uh, getting into telemark all the time and they don't have any ski background. Uh, they've always been a snowboarder as long as they've been on snow. And so that's, that's a common one as well. Oftentimes, uh, I think what we tell people in the shop too, we'll actually tell snowboarders that, in a lot of ways, it's telemark. Once you kind of get the hang of it, is really surfy like a snowboard. Um, it's almost like two toe side turns, alternating toe side turns on a snowboard. And sometimes that'll kind of catch people off guard. They're like, "What are you talking about?" But if you think of uh, how your feet are positioned on a snowboard, and uh, especially, it might even be easier if you're familiar with like hard, like a hard boot snowboard setup, like a carving setup you know, you've got kind of your feet angled a little more to the front, um, in in that fashion. Um, you know, the way your body angulates into the mountain is like a toe side turn more or less. Um, it's very different from an Alpine turn in that, in that way. Um, some of the pressuring and, uh, and that kind of stuff is, you know, similar to Alpine, but the body position itself, um, all of you out there that are thinking, you, you get, you get what I'm talking about. Cause once it clicks and especially on a powder day, the way your body's angled in the mountain is, is uh, super surfy and a lot of fun. So for all you snowboarders out there, if you, if you're thinking about telemarking, it, it's not too far of a stretch. Um, obviously that independent foot movement, you're not, you know, you're going to have two feet on separate skis instead of a uh, one board, but it is completely doable and we see it all the time. So no need to worry about that. 
So come one, come all. <laughs> if you've never skied, snowboard, uh, alpine skier, Nordic skier, whatever, uh, it's totally doable. All right, fifth and final question, moving into it. How long will it take me to get good? This seems to be a common thing that we hear. <laughs> Again, it kind of goes back to the first question, is it hard? And you know, once people are looking at it, they're starting to think, well, how long is it gonna take me to get good? I always say it all depends on how dedicated you wanna be. It's like anything else in life. You wanna put the time in, Again, this is this is not an easy thing to learn, but it it becomes easier the more that you do it. I think one of the biggest struggles with telemark for a lot of people is it tends to be something that someone's interested in, um, but they don't necessarily want to carve the time out to do it, and that's understandable. Um, the most uh, the most common one is. Uh, you know, people don't want to miss a good powder day. Um, and, or maybe you're someone who does, you know, let's say you're living in a place where there's not a lot of snow and you only get five days of ski vacation and there's not a lot of time to do stuff. And so you don't want to forfeit time doing something you know how to do to start something that you don't know how to do and maybe not have as good a time. So it's totally understandable, but it's obviously going to take you a lot longer to learn how to do it. And it's probably going to either, you know, the longer you do stuff and you know, it, it might burn you out and you might just not have fun. I would say, uh, you, you see people get into telemark for a lot of different reasons too, but I think, I think, um, dedicating yourself to it is really the way to find that epiphany moment where it clicks and you're like, Oh, Oh, that's what everyone's talking about. This is pretty rad. Uh, so the more time you put into it, the better it's going to be. Um, for some people link in turns, which means, you know, being able to do one turn and link it into the next one without any pause for someone who's an experienced Alpine skier, um, that might take a day and for others, it might take months. Um, but really the key to this whole thing is practice, practice, practice. Um, the 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 pay in is all on practice. Um, I once had a, a rugby coach when I was in high school. He used to always say, "Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent." And I always like that saying because uh, it, it kind of takes the idea, especially with something like I was saying. This is one of those things that it is endless. You're always going to be perfecting this idea, you know, of, of what a great telemark turn looks and feels like. Um, but you know, the more you practice, the more permanent it becomes and it becomes a fixture in your brain and you're able to just make turns. And, um, that's when it really gets fun because you're subconsciously just kind of adapting to the mountain and, and going. So that's kind of the answer to that question. In, in short, practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, the more you commit to making telemark turns all the time, being on your tele gear all the time. That's how this thing gets fun. And, uh, it's kind of like, as you start learning telemark, if you're a brand new person getting into it, you'll learn there's, it, I always kind of liken telemark skiing to the actual turn itself. There's kind of this danger zone, if you will, of, if you don't drop into your turn all at once and make a commitment, there's kind of this danger zone where you're kind of fiddling with your foot and you're, you're kind of putting your heel up, but you're still in a parallel stance and it can become incredibly unbalanced and dangerous because you're kind of just, eh, I'm kind of so, so like lifting my heel up, but I'm not really making a telly turn. I think the, telemark as a craft is is very much like that the more the more you commit all at once the better it gets and uh there's not really a whole lot of room to kind of dabble in the middle and really uh reap the benefits of how awesome it really is but hey if you only got a couple days to do it i don't want to discourage you from that either um it's it's worth doing uh just be aware there's there's time 
uh, that you're going to need and you're going to have to be patient and you're going to have to take some time and learn and things like better gear and uh, lessons and all these things obviously uh, will accelerate the process and help you have a good time. But I hope that helps you guys. I, I, I kind of wanted to do that and just kind of break down some of the common questions I feel like come up with uh, people that are beginner telemark skiers or people looking to get in. And like I said, if you're listening to this and you're an old school telly person, um, hopefully this is a good refresher. I know it has been for me to kind of teach somebody new and be able to think about the process and think about how to encourage more people around me and encourage people that are coming into the shop and also just the average person that maybe we see on the hill that's curious about it and maybe doesn't even know what telly is and you know they're just kind of interested in the process um i think this is just thinking about these sorts of things has kind of helped me um refresh a little bit about how I can be a good steward of the of the turn and of the of the craft of telemark skiing and how how I can pass it along to other people. So hopefully uh hopefully it's helpful to you guys. Um just to kind of wrap up how you how you can support the podcast. I, get, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I have a bunch of really cool stuff lined up. Uh some cool guests and some cool topics and uh I can't wait for the coming weeks might even drop a couple episodes a week as we get kind of getting into the springtime. Um, and uh, we're going to keep them rolling hopefully every week, um, even through the summer. And definitely opens up some fun topics for that. But if you want to support the podcast, the best way to do it is think about buying your telemark gear on freehealllife.com. That's our shop's website. Um, we've got some killer deals going on right now. Uh, there's 20% off, uh, 22 designs bindings. And if you want, uh, boots and skis as well as the bindings at 20% off right now, you can use spring 2020 code at checkout and get 20% off all the goods. So if you're looking at saving some money on boots, that's a great way to do it. Uh, you can also check out articles on telemarkskier.com and that helps us as well here on the podcast. Like I said, YouTube channel, you can follow us on all the fun social media platforms on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, let me know how I'm doing. I'm doing my best to get back to those at all. I got a little behind with going out of town, but I would love to hear from you. And actually it was really cool. Uh, going out to the Midwest and actually meeting a bunch of people that are listening. So thank you for coming up and saying hello. I completely appreciate it and the, the overwhelming support that you guys are all giving to me as uh, as we're doing these things. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can email me at podcast at freehealllife.com and I will do my best to get back to you and tackle some of the questions that you guys are sending in in future episodes. So thanks for listening. Uh, Please take a second to rate and review us on iTunes or uh, any of the other platforms you might be listening on. And uh, really appreciate you signing off. Until uh, next time, spread telemark always, my friends. And we'll see you on the next round. Peace.